okay, I must be putting some good karma out into the world or something because in this video are so many incredible holy grail puzzles. Some of them are from eBay, but a lot of them were sent in by you guys from viewers. So this is a haul video, but it's gonna be a little different from my other ones because I could not wait. I had to open these up as they came in. So I've actually been filming this video since December. Okay, as you can see, I'm in the middle of filming my Christmas video, but I got this in the mail and I know it's inside and I'm so excited. This is a puzzle that I've seen like one or two pictures of on the internet and then it showed up on eBay and I paid way too much money, but I was like, I need that. I'm not gonna let this one go. I've had an eBay alert set for this for years and this is the first time one of them has actually shown up. Oh, I see it. So if you thought that that box looked like it was about the right size for a record instead of a puzzle, you're not wrong. <laughs> Look what I got. This is the Synergistics Broken Record Puzzle. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, wow. Is it glued down? Wait, okay, hang on. Let me show you what this is. So here it is, the Broken Record Puzzle by uh, Synergistics or Research Corp, who, as you know, I've been collecting all of their puzzles. And they mostly did like plastic kind of brain teaser puzzles. They did very few jigsaw puzzles. And so this was uh, one of the few that I've been keeping an eye out for years now. So it's 200 pieces and when you open it up, Sure enough, it's a puzzle that looks like a record. And I was trying to move this over because it's a little bit off from this cutout here. And it seems to be kind of stuck down. But here's what the middle looks like. Um, I love how they just have their own branding right there on the puzzle. <laughs> it's an ad for the puzzle while you're doing the puzzle. And then let's see what the back looks like. Oh, oh, oh my God, oh my God. It just fully, hang on, what just happened? Okay, maybe it wasn't glued down. Maybe it was just kind of stuck with age because <laughs> it fully just fell out. But this all locks together, so uh, the pieces aren't going everywhere. So that's good to know. Anyway, uh, here's what the back looks like. Uh, pretty much exactly the same as the front, so that's not that exciting. So this is such a special piece for my collection. These are super rare. You don't wanna know how much I paid for this. It is way too much for one single puzzle, but like I needed this for my collection. I've been looking for this for so long. Okay, so before we move on, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant. I have invested quite a lot of money into getting all these puzzles to be able to share them with all of you. And sponsorships like these are why I feel comfortable doing that. So a huge thank you to Brilliant for being such an amazing supporter of this channel. So Brilliant is the best way to learn math, computer science, and data science interactively. I know that we're all very busy, but you can work your way through Brilliant's lessons in as little as 15 minutes a day. That's less time than it takes to watch this video. And interactive lessons have been proven to be six times more effective than passive lessons, like just watching a lecture video. It's the same thing with puzzles. You're not gonna become a great puzzler by just watching me do puzzles, you're gonna have to sit down and do some puzzles for yourself. So if you're a student who needs a little extra help, or maybe you're 
bored in class and you want to work ahead. Or if you're someone who just likes to learn new and interesting things about the world, Brilliant is the place to do it. So if you want to try it, you can try Brilliant free for 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash Karen Puzzles. And the first 200 of you to sign up are going to get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. All right, let's get back to the puzzles. There's a lot of good stuff coming up. Okay, it is January 3rd. I just got back from being home for the holidays yesterday. So I'm still cleaning up all of my Christmas stuff, but I have this big box that got here right before I left. So I already peeked inside to make sure everything was in there, but I bought these puzzles from Carolyn. I've bought a bunch of puzzles from her before. She has great stuff. So let's take a look. Let's see what we got this time. Okay, I am so excited for this puzzle. This is Purple Dread. This is a solid color puzzle, a solid purple puzzle. And I'm actually gonna talk more about this one later in the video for reasons that will make sense later in the video, so put a pin in this one for now. Um, okay, it's a few weeks later and I'm gonna hop back in here because the other one that I thought I was getting from this series, I don't actually know what's happening with that. So I'm just gonna show you the one that I already have, which is the green one. Look at how cool these puzzles look together. It looks like it's the exact same cut on both of them. They're just uh, different colors. So someday when I solve them, I'll have to see if the puzzle cut is exactly the same, and I suspect it probably is. So I've since learned that there is also a blue one and a red one, and I've tried googling for an orange one and a yellow one with every keyword I can think of. Nothing comes up, so I don't believe they exist. But if I can get the blue one and the red one, then I think the series will be complete. Okay, wait, plot twist. So it is literally the day before I'm gonna post this video and just in time, I got one more box in the mail. Oh my gosh. Okay, do you guys think it's the red one or the blue one? Ooh, oh wow. Oh, interesting. Oh, hang on. <laughs> so it is the blue one. Look at how pretty. So this comes from Kathleen. I did not even know this existed until Kathleen got in touch with me. I am so thankful to her for thinking of me and my collection for this. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful. And then the thing that I said uh, was interesting as I was opening it up is that this text is actually a dark purple on top of the blue. This one is a dark purple and then a light purple. And this one is like a regular green and then kind of a dark grayish green. So it's interesting that they went with a purple for this title. So here are all of the pieces. Uh, this is a bit of a lighter blue than I expected. It's not quite as aqua as the box looks. Um, but very pretty. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited to have all three of these. So now, for real this time, now all that I need is the red one to complete the collection. Um, I know that it's out there. I've seen it uh, be very expensive on eBay before, so hopefully someday I'll get one. Then we've got a sealed Old Farmer's Almanac uh, released by Gamophiles. As you guys know, I am collecting the Gamophiles puzzles. Um, this one isn't super rare, but it is fairly rare to find a sealed one, so it's still in perfect condition. Oh my gosh, and then this one. I'm so excited for this one. I didn't even know I was like getting this one at first. At first I was just buying these other puzzles from Carolyn, and then she was like, do you want me to throw in this one too? And I was like, yes, absolutely. You don't even know how long I've been looking. This is green fog. So this is another uh, solid color puzzle. I already have the red one and the yellow one. 
I actually have two copies of the red one because the backs are slightly different. And I'm pretty sure the green one is the last in that series. I don't think they made any other colors of these solid round puzzles. Although if anyone has seen them, please let me know because like, who knows? But the red one is definitely the most popular. The yellow and the green ones are much more rare. So to have this to complete that collection is so exciting. Um, I just wanted to jump back in and clarify that even though these are both solid colored puzzles made by American Publishing Co., there are two completely different series. This one was released in 1977, and this one was released in 1978. And this one has a yellow puzzle, whereas this one has a blue and purple puzzle, and they both have a red puzzle. Red is always the most popular color for a solid colored puzzle. And then there's one more puzzle in here. Okay, this is a very flat <laughs> jigsaw puzzle. Also a super rare jigsaw puzzle. Ooh, oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so this is Toy Box Fantasy released by Lawson and Lawson. And if this looks familiar to you, it's because I do already have one, but the reason why I wanted a second one is because it comes sealed in this cardboard frame and these puzzles are rare enough that I wanted to keep one sealed and in perfect condition. And then I figured if I got a second one, I could open it up and actually be able to solve the puzzle. So I definitely talked about this puzzle in a previous video. Um, I actually reached out to Chance Brown, the illustrator, and got his perspective on like how this came about. So when I saw that Carolyn had a copy of this, I was like, I need that for my collection. I need it. I can't believe I have two of these. That's so exciting. Okay, so it is early on uh, Sunday, January 7th. I'm about to spend all day filming day two of the Pokemon puzzle. But first, I went to my P.O. box the other day and I have two boxes to show you guys. Uh, let me push some of these sorted pieces out of the way. So this one comes from Rebecca. I know exactly what's in here. This one, I don't remember. It's possible it's an eBay purchase. We're, we're gonna find out in a minute. First, let's do this one. Oh, this is so sweet. She sent me some goodies as well as um, the puzzle. But okay, ooh, here's the puzzle. Here's the puzzle. Look at this. It's a giant die, like a dice, but just a singular die. So this is called the Oz Jigsaw Cube. It is from... Does it say? Am I blocking it? Yeah, it's from 1975. And here are all the pieces, but there's a special twist with this puzzle. I'm, I'm gonna show you. So I'm just gonna pull out a puzzle piece. Looks, well, that looks a little different. I was gonna say it looks fairly normal, but this is actually a magnet and you build the puzzle on the side of the puzzle box. So when you put this together, you're gonna end up with this on the outside of this box. How fun is that? So you're basically doing five mini puzzles. I'm pretty sure they go on the bottom too. So I had seen these online, but I think I had only seen a flower design that was released. I had never seen the one that's a giant uh, die, which I love. I love this even more. I love that it makes an actual object, but in a giant size. So when Rebecca emailed me about this, I was like, yes, I will absolutely take it. This is perfect for my collection. And now let's see what's in our mystery package. Oh my gosh. Okay. Of course. I remember what I bought. How could I forget? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I didn't even know this existed. Okay. So back up um, a couple weeks ago, I saw, I got some eBay alerts that a bunch of puzzles from American Publishing Co. from the 60s had been uploaded, or I think I maybe just got an alert for this one, but then I uh, clicked through to the person's profile and I saw that there were literally hundreds of them. And of course I was like, I want all of these. I cannot afford to buy 
all of them, but I picked some of my favorites and I bid on them and I won two of them. So here's one of them. It is the Moonshot Puzzle. Here's what it's gonna look like. Um, it's funny, a little assembly time. And then here is the other one I got, which I did not know even existed. This is the Women's Liberation Puzzle. So this came out in 1970. I assume this is what the image looks like, but look at those graphics. It's so 70s. This is so cool, like such a great piece of history. And then it's a tin. It might, is this one still sealed? I know a bunch of the ones he was selling were still sealed. It is still sealed and there's no pull tab. Um, <laughs> I don't think I own a can opener. <laughs> All of the cans I use have like a pull tab. How am I gonna get into my puzzle? <laughs> I guess I'll have to borrow a can opener from someone. Anyway, there was also one for the pill, which I thought was incredible. I, I think I bid on that one. Um, either way, I didn't end up getting it, but just to know it exists, I would love to get that one someday. You guys, you guys, the biggest plot twist of all. Look what I got. How cool is that? So I was editing the video and I was going online to try to find pictures of this from when I was talking about it. And then I realized I think this guy had two of them available for sale, and this one was in slightly worse condition, but it was still available. So here is what it looks like. How incredible is that typography? Is the, just the entire idea of this puzzle? And then here's what the back looks like. You can see it's from 1970. Um, I'm not actually sure what the picture is, I guess. What's here on the front is the only image that could be the picture. Um, I'm really not sure, but it is still sealed. So again, I'm gonna need to find a can opener somewhere to be able to get in and see what's going on with this puzzle. It's really not in great condition, but just the fact that I have one, oh my gosh. This is so cool. This is so cool. Like such an amazing piece of history. So when I went online to buy that, I also looked at the other puzzles that he still had available and I put in an offer for a bunch that I uh, wanted. So let me show you what else I got. I got this pop art puzzle, which is uh, the Ford logo. <laughs> which I just think is so random and interesting. Here's what the back looks like. Um, it's from 1968. And if you've been watching me on YouTube for a long time, you know that I did the Ford Fiesta movement. <laughs> if, you've, if you're an OG YouTuber, then you know what that is. So I thought having a Ford puzzle was kind of appropriate. Similarly, I thought this Avis puzzle was kind of interesting, still in the uh, car theme. I just love these like old advertisement puzzles. I think they were really beautifully designed back in the day. So here's what the back looks like. Just such a beautiful font. Um, yeah, I think that's really cool. Oh, this one. Um, I'm gonna have to show you another picture of why this was so interesting. Oh wow, look at how cool that typography is. That is incredible. Here's the info, it came out in 1969. And then the reason why it's so interesting is because there's an actual hole cut out from the middle of the puzzle. And then finally, I also got this snowflake puzzle. So it's the same box design as the Moonshot one, only it has a white top instead of red. And then if we look on the sides, it has the exact same overlapping puzzle piece shapes. But here is what the picture looks like. So it's just this pop art snowflake design. Also the time, if you can read that, is 96 minutes and three and a half hours for expert and average, which is a little more than what they thought for the moon puzzle. 
So I might have to solve these and, uh, you know, compare my times. <laughs> okay, so it's now January 16th. I just finished filming uh, the outro for the big Pokemon puzzle. So I just got that put away. I'm so excited to have my dining room table back again. But I have a couple boxes that I picked up from my PO box and what is in this one? Literally, I could have made an entire video about this. Like this one might be the most exciting of all. Oh my gosh, ah, I see it. Oh, oh wow, okay, oh wow, it's real, it's real. So this comes from Lori and Lori packaged this so amazingly well, like literally nothing on earth could have hurt this puzzle. Oh wow. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I have one. So as you can tell from the round shape, this is a vintage spring box. This is the Spot Life puzzle. This is a super rare edition of the Little Red Riding Hood's Hood solid red puzzle. Oh, it still has the little booklet inside. Okay, let me show you guys a close up. So the front is solid red, except for this. Uh, oh, I thought it was a sticker. It's not, it's just printed right on there, Spot Life. And then if we look inside, we can see this little booklet. And then here is what that looks like. Um, there are photos of all of this online, so this isn't brand new information. And then here are the pieces. It's another solid red puzzle for me to add to my collection. And then there's nothing on the back, it's just a solid white. So I've talked about all of the different versions of the uh, solid red Springbok puzzles before. This, as far as I can tell, is basically the least rare of the very rare editions. Does that make sense? But these can go on eBay for hundreds of dollars. So for Lori to have come across one and then think of me and want to give it to me for my collection is so incredibly special. I can't believe I have this. Now that I have this and also a close up of the three bears, I think I do need to do another video just doing a full, full deep dive into uh, the Springbok solid color puzzles. Okay, I'm in the studio because I thought I might photograph these red pieces for the thumbnail. And there are a few things I noticed. So first, the puzzle itself has the same Spot Life logo. Uh, it's just like the flat banana puzzle where it has the one little logo and then a whole bunch of solid colored pieces. Next, I found some edge pieces that are not cut properly. Like you can see, I can feel this red uh, kind of sticker, this printing, there's like a little ridge there. So the cardboard was cut a little bit bigger than the actual design was printed on. That's so interesting. And then I also opened up my 1970 copy of Little Red Riding Hood's Hood. And if we take a piece from there, I'm gonna try not to get them mixed up. <laughs> Can you imagine? But you can see that the color is actually a little different. So the spot life is this bright red, and then the little red riding hood's hood is this kind of darker crimson red. The backs are also different. So this one has the red back and this one has the, um, the teal back. And then also the cuts are different. So you can see how the original one has much more kind of big bulbous connectors, whereas this one, the connectors are much smaller and kind of oval shaped. So very different from the typical uh, vintage spring box that I've normally done. Okay, next, um, I'm pretty sure I know what's in here, but I'm not 100% sure. So we're all gonna find out together. Ooh, okay, I was right. I knew what was in here. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's the yellow wet paint puzzle. So this was sent in to me by Ron. So a huge thank you to Ron. 
Um, I already have the blue and, or the red and the blue of this one. The yellow was the only one that I'm missing. So I'm so happy to have all of them. This is another puzzle by Synergistics Research Corporation, which is uh, the company that I've been trying to collect pretty much all of their puzzles. Uh, the front is a little faded, but that's okay. I'm just happy to have it for my collection. So this is the shape of the finished uh, puzzle. And if you guys remember, I already featured the spilt milk puzzles from the same company, which is uh, the white one and then the brown one. And so all of the wet paint puzzles and the spilt milk puzzles are all the exact same finished shape. They just printed it in multiple colors and then released them as milk puzzles and then as paint puzzles. Oh, wow, look, I never noticed this before. They took three different pictures to put on the back with the different color spilling out. So if you look at the way the pieces are scattered, they're entirely different in all three. Oh, that's so interesting. So here's a look at the pieces. Another a solid color puzzle for my collection. <laughs> so, okay, we have one more box here, but here's the thing. What is in this box is so exciting that these puzzles are gonna catapult up to the very top of my video list and I'm gonna give them their own dedicated video. So I'm not gonna open this in this video, but just hang tight because I will be featuring what is in here very soon. And trust me, it is gonna be worth the wait. Although I think I will post the unboxing a little early on Patreon. So if you really wanna know what is in here, you can head over to my Patreon and you can find out right now. Okay, so now it is February 1st. I'm about to shoot the outro to the um, mirror puzzle. I have this box from Ashley, and this one, I uh, know what's in here. Ooh, very mysterious. All we can see so far is a blank back. Oh my gosh, oh, that's so cool. So this is a puzzle of the um, indeterminate facade showroom, which is uh, the showroom of the company Best Products, which is in Houston, yeah, Houston, Texas. So the reason why this was so interesting to me and why I wanted to get it from Ashley when she emailed me about this is because this was made by Nordevco, but they were based on the East Coast in like the New Jersey, New York, Connecticut area. So the fact that they made this puzzle for a company in Texas, like this puzzle does not exist on the internet. I tried searching so many different combinations of keywords everywhere I could think. This seems to be super rare, probably only sold in this building. So I've been researching Nordevco. So the fact that we found a puzzle by them that doesn't seem to have been in their main catalog is just super interesting. And yeah, this building itself, um, there also isn't a ton of information about it. It's a building that's designed to look like it's falling down. Um, Ashley sent me an article with a little background information, so I'll link that down below if you want to learn more. Also, I showed a picture of this to Valentina, and she was just like, that doesn't really look like a fun puzzle. And I'm like, well, no, but think of the historical significance. And then she was like, Karen, pretty soon you won't be able to walk into your apartment without tripping over piles of historical significance. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> anyway, I thought this was gonna be the final puzzle that I feature in this video, but while I was at Winter Carnival, a puzzle that I've been looking for for ages showed up on eBay. I put in my bid and the auction actually finished while I was in the middle of a speed puzzle practice. So I didn't know until we finished the puzzle whether I won the eBay auction or not, but I did. So the guy should be sending it uh, in like a day or two from now, and then I'll get it next week. 
So I'm gonna hold this video for another week from when I was planning to post it, but just wait, it'll be worth it, just wait. <laughs> okay, so it's now the middle of February. Um, I've been working nonstop on the Winter Carnival video, and I just sent it off to everyone who's featured in it to make sure they're okay with it before I post it. So while I'm waiting on that, I have my very last eBay purchase for this video. I am so excited. When this showed up on eBay, I could not believe it. I can't wait to see it in person. <laughs> so this is the Hershey's Kiss puzzle from Synergistics Research Corp. And it is still sealed, which is so rare. Okay, so here's the close up. Um, as you can see, the plastic has yellowed, but that's fine. Here is what all of the packaging looks like. Um, you can see it's this plastic puzzle that when you fit it together, it makes a giant Hershey's Kiss. Um, here's the other side. I think that's basically the same thing. And then nothing on the bottom. But the thing with this puzzle is that since it's wrapped in foil like this, once you take the foil off, you're never really gonna get it back together the way that it was when it was originally packaged. So to have one of these that is brand new, that's still intact, is so exciting. Okay, so here is everything that I have. Um, I know that there are a couple items that I'm missing, but I think this is probably one of the more complete Synergistics puzzle collections probably in the world. So you can see how I have these also still in the packaging. It looks uh, just like this one. And I actually already had the first, whoop, ah. <laughs> Um, I already have, ah, oh my God, <laughs> it doesn't lock together very well. I was trying to say, I already had the Hershey's Kiss only without any of the packaging. I had bought this on eBay a while ago. So I'm really happy that I have one that I can actually solve. And then I have this one, which I can keep intact. And then uh, just for fun, this is super rare. Um, I got this back when I was covering the spilt milk puzzle, and I heard from the guy whose dad uh, designed these puzzles. He sent me this catalog, which was so exciting. Oh yeah, you remember I talked about this whole page on there. So here it is. Here's how they were advertising the giant Hershey's Kiss back in the day. Oh wow, and look at that. It's the display case. Oh my gosh, if one of these, or if any of these display cases still existed, that would be incredible for my collection. But I suspect they were probably all uh, thrown out. Oh, here we go. Um, I had bought this on eBay a while back. Look at this, there were actually six different ones. So I actually do still have quite a lot to collect. Oh, and then this one is also pretty rare, but it looks like there's also a kiss version. So uh, that's another thing that I still have to collect. Okay, so those were all of the most exciting, like holy grail puzzles that I really wanted to feature. But you know me, I've also been acquiring a lot of other puzzles. So here is a quick rundown of all of the other puzzles that I've gotten over the last few months. Um, okay, I could have made an entire separate haul video just about these bonus puzzles that I'm gonna show you. So when I was at Winter Carnival, uh, between two of the rounds, we were just walking down the street and this guy stops me and is like, Karen, wait, I have something for you. And then he hands me this puzzle. Unfortunately, it was so fast that I didn't get his name. So if that's you watching, uh, please let me know. Luckily, it was a very small puzzle. So here it is. It's this mini wooden puzzle from Bits and Pieces. So I opened it up and this is what it looks like. It is super tiny, like you can see it compared to my hand. And so if we flip it over, sure enough, it's made of wood. And this actually answers or like helps fill in some information of another puzzle that I have. So I found this puzzle just in my sister's room at my parents' house. I did not remember 
us having this or didn't know where it came from. I assumed it was bits and pieces because we had a bits and pieces puzzle that was uh, a full size puzzle of this exact same image, but I didn't have the box. It was just in this bag. But again, it's this mini wooden puzzle. So by giving this to me, now I have the box and I have a little more context of where this mystery puzzle came from. So that is so exciting. So I also got this one at Winter Carnival. Uh, this comes from Angela and I had arranged with her beforehand to uh, that she was going to bring it and give it to me there. So this is a tennis themed puzzle uh, from American Publishing Corp. And you heard me talk about the ones that came in the can uh, earlier in the video. So this one isn't uh, quite as exciting as some of the other ones that I showed, but I thought it was, yeah, just another interesting example of these puzzles that come in a can. And this image is actually <laughs> really funny. Luckily, no can opener required for this one. So there's a look at what the pieces look like. And then everything on these two piles is from Ken and Julia, who I have uh, bought vintage puzzles from before. Look at how cool this one is. So it's called Vassar, Vassarly, Vassarly. <laughs> um, it's from American Publishing Corporation, again, uh, this time from 1980. Uh, the box isn't in great condition and it is missing a piece or two, but like, just look at that. This is so perfect for my collection. Then we have Spindrift from Another View from C.R. Gibson. Uh, this is one where the image doesn't look particularly fun, but when I was doing the jigsaw puzzle, jigsaw puzzle, I started getting interested in the Another View series, and there aren't actually that many of them. So I figured I would grab this one for all of my piles of historical significance that I'm going to be tripping over. This one, I just thought the image was really funny. Look at that. <laughs> it's so vintage. Um, this is No Deposit, No Return. It's from 1984 from the Great American Puzzle Factory. Then we have this gumball machine puzzle, uh, which is from Springbok. Um, I just think that image is super, super fun. I mean, there's going to be a lot of solid black pieces, but everything else looks really fun. <laughs> so then we have a comic book puzzle from Nordevco. Uh, this one is not at all rare. These are always showing up on eBay. But uh, since Ken and Julia had one, I was like, throw it in for my Nordevco research. Then we've got an Eaton puzzle. Um, this one is called Hurtful. Not solid red, but a whole lot of red. <laughs> so it, someday when I decide to do that one, it's going to be really difficult. Then we've got another Springbok, Summer Frozen on a Stick. Um, this one looks really fun, though. Um, that just looks like a great image for a puzzle. I can't wait to do that one. And then uh, is this another Springbok? I believe it is. Yes, this is a Springbok from their Puzzles pl Puzzle Puzzle Plus series. Um, this one is a needlepoint image. So it comes with instructions so you can needlepoint this exact image on your pillow or sampler. That's so cool. And also it's a really fun puzzle image. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so that's what the pieces look like. And then you can create it yourself. So they give you a quarter of it. And then here are all of the instructions. So then if you guys remember in my crossword puzzle, jigsaw puzzle video, I talked about the Puguzzle series where uh, there was a whole like contest involved in it. And I figured since Ken and Julia had a sealed one, might as well grab that in case I want to feature this company a little more in depth one day. Oh my gosh, this one I'm so excited about. This is so cool. So we had a different one of these, but uh, from the same series, we had an underwater image uh, when, when my sister and I were kids. And this puzzle doesn't have edges, but it's a repeating pattern. So you can pick up a chunk from any side and then connect it up to the other side and it can just 
go on forever and you can create any shaped outline that you want. I don't know if I'm explaining it right. Um, here's how they explain it on the back, but these are very cool. I don't, I haven't seen a lot uh, of puzzles like this and I think it's such an interesting idea. All right, next, uh, this one is from Golden. So this isn't particularly special, but I just liked this rainbow image. So I thought that would be fun. Then we have this puzzle within a puzzle. And so, uh, you have to find over 800 peas painted on purpose. So I think there are 800 things that start with P, like a pineapple <laughs> in this image. So that's kind of cool. So here's their little blurb. And then here's the back. So you can see all of the different ones that they made within this series. And then finally, we have the what movie is that trivia puzzle. And so they literally have trivia questions on the puzzle pieces. Um, if you go back and watch my video about the uh, the 3D layered puzzles from Buffalo, I actually talked to the guy who um, invented a lot of the puzzles that Buffalo was selling. And so this was one of them. So I figured if I wanted to do a video about these trivia uh, jigsaw puzzles, this is a great one to have for that. Moving on, we have a few more vintage puzzles and then I'll get to the modern ones. So Alex actually found this whole stack of miniature to-go puzzles at a vintage store. Now, I know that there are some vintage puzzle collectors who collect this brand. It's not one that I've personally really looked into yet, but um, Alex got such a good deal on all of these puzzles that I was like, send them over and someday I will look more into them. So here's what some of the pieces look like. They're actually super thick cardboard. Look at that. I'm really impressed by that. These pieces look really good. Oh, and look at this. They give you an assembly time. Do you guys think I can do it in the genius amount of time? <laughs> I mean, these puzzles aren't very big. What are they, 100 pieces? Oh, only uh, 55 pieces. I think I can probably do 55 pieces in 10 to 20 minutes. <laughs> well, if I say that, I guess I have to give it a try. All right, well, it's missing half a piece, and there are also a few different sections where the picture is coming up, which did not help, but I still did it in four minutes and 21 seconds. So am I officially a genius? <laughs> am I a mega genius? <laughs> All right, so that's it for the vintage puzzles. So coming over here to the modern puzzles, um, I had seen this Gallison one. This is the seven days of mindfulness puzzle. And so it comes with seven mini gradient puzzles like this. So I just bought this on Amazon. Um, it's just one that I wanted for my collection. I think this is so pretty. So they do come all mixed up. However, I believe they have different colored backs. So I think you can sort them out without having to solve them. And then it comes with, yeah, you'd have to fold this into place, but it comes with these dividers. So yeah, I think that's really cool. And then I was recently at the Color Factory in New York, which is like a um, photo op kind of museum. And in the gift shop, I saw that they had released their own color wheel jigsaw puzzle. So I ordered this online. I think this is perfect for my puzzle collection. Uh, I have another Ravensburger, which I got as a prize from a speedpuzzling.com contest. So this will be good practice before nationals. And then we have three new ones from Happily Puzzles. And I'm always so happy whenever these come in the mail. I just love the illustration styles. I uh, already solved 
all three of them and I really enjoyed them. I also got three new ones from Wentworth that they sent me. So there is this autumnal fox one. I already solved that one. Um, these textures are very busy, so it was a little difficult, but I really liked it. Then there's this one called Eight Maids of Milking, and I'm now seeing this, and I definitely did not read that when I was putting it together, because when I first looked at this, I was like, I'm going to look for those white snowflake shapes, and then I'll work my way out. Well, it turns out there are no white snowflake shapes. I was so confused. So I ended up starting from the outside and working my way in. But again, like a very busy image. So even though it's only 250 pieces, this was still kind of a tricky one. And then they also sent me this ornaments one, which I haven't done yet, but I'm definitely going to get to it soon because I just love these wooden puzzles. And finally, the Ibu box was Ibuing. <laughs> they sent me so many. So this one called Seabirds is actually the only one from this batch that I've already done. Um, I really liked it. I liked this kind of inset image within the image. I thought it was really fun. And then... <laughs> Oh boy, I'm just gonna go through these rapid fire. So we've got Paris Bookseller, Cat in the Castle, Pink Kitchen, Wildlife Treasures, Ducks in the Clearing, Times Square, Alchemist's Kitchen, Life in a Tree, and English Green Market. And then also just one 500, which I'll probably do as some speed puzzle practice. Um, this one's called Charcuterie, and it actually... <laughs> The picture actually kind of reminds me of the Ravensburger round ones. So those will be both be really fun to do. But don't worry, the Ibu ones, I pretty much just do once and then donate. So I don't need to find space in my studio for all of these puzzles because it's kind of a lot. <laughs> Well, I think this has been a very successful puzzle haul. So let me know two things down in the comments. Number one, which of the puzzles that I showed would you most want to solve? And number two, which of the puzzles that I showed would you most want to see me feature in a video? Your code word for the comments will be best. Am I pointing at best? Nope. Best. It's over there. <laughs> and I mean, thank you for watching these videos, for making it possible for me to build this collection. I am the luckiest and most privileged person in the world. So thank you. I really appreciate every single one of you.